Hello, it's Chris, and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? Today we have my one of my Amiga 2000s rev. I don't know. Green, I think it's a six. Don't know. When I went to World of Commodore, I bought a 2320 flicker fixer. If you know about the 2320, you know why I bought it, but it's a great flicker fixer. Recently, I traded some stuff to Mr. Michael up in Canada for yet another one, except she's got a broken switch. I don't know if it's an enabled or disabled. It is a KNKK23, or I'm sorry, NKK single pole 2012. It's still available on Mauser, even though it's been discontinued. They do have some stock. $4.99 US for the switch and $8 to ship. So we're we'll testing this one too. I want to see if they both work. Also, I reached out to PCB Way Shared Projects and had five of the Amiga 4000 Tower disk modules recreated. So I can fix my original disk module. I was going to build a new one, but I think I'm just going to transfer parts as I go and see what we get. All right, so first I need to open this baby up. Oh my goodness. She's still got the rubber feet on her bottom. I'm going to get this out of here. Five screws, you can get a case out. One, two, three, four, five. Slides forward. Inside we have, oops. Inside we have a TF536 on a Kipper 2K riser board with a whopping 128 megabyte cartridge. We are rocking Kickstart 3.2.2. That's great. Uh, 534 with IDE actually. So that's what this is booting from. It's 68030 at 30, 33 with an FPU and I think 8 megs of RAM or something like that. She is a Rev 4. Son of a bitch. 4.3 with a green light. So Frankenstein unit. First I'm going to turn it on and see if it works in RGB using the Amiga Kit DB23 to VGA adapter on my Dell U2410F. It is a 15 kilohertz compatible Amiga monitor. This is HDMI, we don't need that. And a power cord, power, a power thing. I do not have a mouse or keyboard hooked up. And this monitor is a little dim until it warms up. Hit the button. Hey, turn on the power. And hit the button. Low, high. Don't have any hard drive lights on the terrible fire card, so I don't know what the hell it's doing. I do ha oh, I do have the plug plugged in, but I don't know if it works. Oh, the hard drive light does work. It's just so daggone dim, you cannot see it. This is probably the slowest compact flash card known to man because it's from my original 1 megapixel Hewlett Packard camera from like the year 2001. Cool. So 322, 4 megs of whopping RAM, and 1 mega chip. Great. Turn this unit off. We're going to remove the DB23 so we have a straight D sub 15 VGA standard connector. So first going to test the card I bought off Mr. Joe at World of Commodore 2023. This is a Commodore 2320 flicker fixer with an off on switch and a normal VGA connector. The reason these are so sought after, and I hate to even reveal this fact, is because of this. Popping that lid, you will see, there we go, you will see we have the amber chipset from the ECS 3000. So the 3000's video system is the flicker fixer for this card. This has a, a plastic backing so you don't uh, screw it up. Simply insert the card into the video slot, plug in your VGA monitor. It does have screws but we're not worried about it. It has two positions. I don't know which one is off or on so we're just going to turn it on. It will still display in a 15 kilohertz mode. I'm going to double mouse button. And we'll see A, potentiometer adjustments, B, does this work? Okay, so it's bluer than anything. Now that could be one of many things. I'm going to hit the flicker fixer button. Yep, great. So we're blue. I'm going to let it run for a minute, see if she comes around. You know what, I'm going to pop this top. So like all Amiga 3000s, you have your three 
four bit field ram that's an Oki data uh, one two three red green blue you'll have an any five six four phase lock a 7404 uh, buffer chip two 2410 C's I think they are uh, buffer chips here line drivers some resistor packs uh, normal resistors ceramic caps bada bing bada chain and of course the amber chip from an Amiga 3000 reseating the card again turning it on double mouse button let's see what we get does it look blue or did it actually turn white no it is blue great this is in 640 by 480 at 60 Hertz this 480i so this is the 15 kilohertz side with the switch in the up position switch towards the Amiga is 31 kilohertz however it's blue it's in phase and it looks correct it's just blue we can see what we get for our kickstart ROM screen alright that works I don't know why it was extensively blue but this actually looks okay let's flip the switch RGB looks fine I wonder why that looks blue in the kicks yeah that looks great there is a little phase lock polarization here meaning what meaning I have to take a ceramic screwdriver and fix that always keep your tools in their little plastic things because otherwise you'll just lose them so every time I'm done with this I put it back okay we're going to adjust the main potentiometer here. Knock it out of phase, knock it in phase. See how it's getting crappy. Looks nice and clear. I'll tell you that much. White is white finally. There's nothing on this at all old. I mean literally nothing but a workbench install. Nothing. It's it was just meant to build this machine to it's there you can use this and then you, there you got it. Pull this card out. Rub it on my belly for good luck. Set this aside. This is the recent acquisition to me. I traded for uh, this, so we're going to put this one in. Same scenario. This has a busted switch. However, it looks like it's jumpered for amber being enabled. Turn it on again. I'm going to double mouse button this one and see if it turns blue. Let's see what we get. No, this one looks fine in early startup. Alright, let's boot it. Let's see what it looks like. Looks the same in workbench. I can't unfortunately disable this car because of its broken switch. I have one of these switches on order from Mauser. And it should be here in a couple weeks, I hope. But yeah, flicker fixer fixer flicking is working. I do have to clean up the signal a little bit. That's this rear potentiometer and the phase right here. But it looks pretty good to me. Nice and clear. I can disable it. Or this that's disabled let's enable it that's 31 kilohertz nice and clear reboot it again get the ROM screen disable it there's some fine grain lines in it so there's open loop now I can adjust its phase oops this is where you're supposed to hook an oscilloscope up to it and measure the 28 megahertz signal across the chip macro movements alright that's funky but now we're going to adjust the rear phase those pins 28 14 ground are for your test points alright I'm going to take it out of open loop it's pretty damn clear to me but it works sweet so this board is from 1990 from Commodore itself Right when the 3000 came out, they used its chipset to make a flicker fixer for the 2000. I'm going to put some screws in here, and she's going to live in here. Okay, they're M3. Okay, with that, we'll boot it again. Interesting. So this one's blue also. Oh, it's the stupid... Oh my god, if it's my monitor cable, look. So the whole blue thing, because this is the other card, is not the thing itself. It's my VGA cable. Watch. Ta-da. So they both work perfectly. Okay, so I got to replace this VGA cable. 
never underestimate your own stuff. So, there we go. That's the Commodore A2320 Flicker Fixer Video Enhancer card, circa 1990 from Commodore Amiga. And uh, it has an amber chip in it, and I love it. And all the 3,000 guys scalp these up to destroy them, which they should not be destroyed. They should be used as they were, unless you absolutely have to have an amber chip, and that's the only way you got to get it. Thanks for coming along on this super fast journey, and a quick review of these Flicker Fixer cards. I'm glad they both work. One will live in here, one's going to live over on the other 2,000, so I can get rid of the dongle adapter thing that I've been using for the past 30 years. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.